In 2021, I met up with a guy named Kaza, an ambassador for Victron Energy, as he was doing an RV upfit outside of Philadelphia. As an ambassador for Victron Energy, he travels around a lot, so he lives and works out of his converted FedEx delivery truck, aka his shop on wheels. So without further ado, why don't we catch up with me and him as he gives us a tour of his custom-built FedEx delivery truck. You, you live and work out of it, eh? I do, yeah. Lived in it full time for quite a while and, and now it's my work truck and we take it on trips. Oh, it yeah. smells great in here. Thank you, man. That smells really nice. Yeah, it might have something to do with the wood burning stove. Yeah, this wow. is a cubic mini. And it's it is mini, but um, it'll keep you warm. No way. How we, common is this? I mean fairly, you know, I, I saw it online before I did it myself and uh um, it's been great, man. Um you know, we've we've been warm in here. We've been so hot that we had to actually ventilate this thing while we were camping in negative 30. You know, it's like, <laughs> no way. It's like it's too hot in here. We got to get some airflow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yep. What a neat idea. How, what's the restrictions? Like you have to have it stand up above the the roof by. Yeah, it's got to be a few inches above the roof. Um, you know, they recommend this. Uh, the pipe is actually insulated in this bigger pipe. Okay. Um, and and that's just to keep you know keep from catching your ceiling on fire or your insulation in the ceiling on fire or something like that so this is just a sleeve this yeah. is the interior and then the sleeve just exactly. kind of goes about yep. ar around it and it actually helps to like keep this whole thing kind of hotter right because it's an insulation yeah over this and yeah it pumps out a lot wow what do you use uh, just just wood or do you have coal no, you know what i like to use is um it's called Envirolog, Envirolog, or something like that, and it's recycled cardboard. Um, and it, the thing I like about it is that you can, you know, you can take it out. It comes in this log, and you can take it out um, onto the street, you know, on a curb or something, and just just hit it. Yeah, yeah. And then you can get Bre little break chunks it into pieces. that are good enough to fit inside there. You know, otherwise you got to cut wood, and and it burns really hot, which is good because the hotter it burns. The less you have to come in here and clean this chimney up. But you have a Wabasto as well. So yeah, that's a. Um, it's not a Wabasto. It's a Chinese diesel heater. Okay. So I was like, you know, trying to build this on a budget, and I figured, you know, mixed reviews. Let's roll the dice. Yeah. It was like a hundred bucks for everything I needed. You know, it comes in a kit. Right. And uh, so I, I rolled the dice, and it's been working really well for. Oh, me. so it's so it's good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. thought you were gonna be like, I rolled the dice. Yeah, you don't win them all. No. 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 It's great, dude. Oh, great. That thing. Uh, that thing actually gave us, uh, well, it gave me this like sinus headache because it dried me out so much. The that, heater, that heater. That heater, because it's dry heat. You yeah. know, if you got a propane heat or something, it's going to be releasing moisture as well. Yeah. But we, we had to get a humidifier. To, it worked to, uh, so well, you needed a humidifier. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Diesel heater's good. And then we got a little, you know, the little buddy. Have you seen those? No. It's like a propane heater. It's a Is this handheld one? Or? Yeah, it's yeah. handheld. You, you um, screw in the camping cylinder. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a good backup, too. Yeah. You know, we've used all three of them. So you have three different uh, backups. Just in case, for man. Heat. We ain't going to freeze. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, cool, no, cool, no cool. chance. No chance that we're going to freeze. And you have an induction yeah. uh, stove? Yep, that's an induction cooktop there. And we just take it out and lay it up on top that's worked really good for you us. have the hood and everything huh that's yeah. cool so this hood it actually just um it it filters the air that's that comes from you know it filters the smoke and then it comes out right here oh and okay. so i turned that vent fan on because you know a friend of mine he was using a, his vent fan to to pull out the few you know the, but the, the smoke. oil and the grease and it, the it, oh, gum, it, it would screw up. that all up exactly yeah. yeah so this cleans it first and then it goes out there. How, how often do you cook all the time pretty frequently okay. i mean between okay. this and we're big fans of the instant pot too yeah yeah That's, there's a lot of people instapotting their journey they're you know? great man they're they're really efficient and uh um they cook food quick and it's easy. It's everything in one pot, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's nice when you're on the road. What kind of power consumption do you need for an Instapot? You'd probably, at the very minimum, want a 2,000 watt inverter. Yeah. Um, you know, the Instant Pot, it's not going to draw quite that much, but you want to 
oversize your inverter a little bit so it's not maxing out. Yeah. It's using that power to, to bring it up it, to temperature. To bring it up to temperature. And, then it and it's, simmers. It's a pressure cooker, so yeah. it's all all the steam is trapped in there. And then the steam is what finishes the cooking. So yeah. it, it's not like you got it on the whole time. Right. Which right. Is good for for conserving energy. And you got a little work area here. Yeah, this is a recent renovation here. This uh, um, this dinette. Okay. And added a ton of storage. You know, drawers underneath the seats. Mm -hmm. Drawer underneath where the table is. Okay. If you guys are interested in um, in what do you do? You just get people set up with their entire electrical system, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah I mean, um, you know, DIYers or if you need a professional installation, it's uh. Um, so, so my business is RV Solar Connections, and we work with you from the beginning to figure out what your power needs are, what kind of things that you want to run, and based off of that, we run some calculations, and that kind of tells us how many batteries should we have, how many solar panels should be on the roof, do we need a, a secondary means of charging like a, a, an alternator, um, probably going to want a shore power hookup, right? We, got, we figure out all of these things out and then we design the system and, and if you're a DIYer, we hook you up with a wiring diagram and, and all the support you need to do the project. Or if you need a professional installation, you know, we can put you in touch with somebody close by to, to make that happen for you. So how long you been doing this? Well, uh, you know, I grew up doing electrical. Um, worked for my dad, he owned an electrical business. And, uh, and from there, I, I worked as a, um, the lead electrician at a camper construction company, uh, Colorado Teardrop, shout out to, to those guys. <laughs> and, um, and after that, you know, I built my own van um, and, and helped friends with the electrical aspect, you know, with, with different things in their vans, but, but mainly it was helping them with the electrical, with the solar. Um, and a couple years ago, I started my own business and now I'm just fully focusing on you know solar upfits and uh, and RV uh, you know RV solar RV solar connections. If you think you're gonna build out of your van, uh, what is the, what is the lesson you should say? Yeah, well <laughs> you know at least double or triple the amount of time that you expect to to take to build out you know yeah. whatever it is that you're doing because nothing ever goes as planned. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you, you want to give yourself plenty of wiggle room because if you if you give yourself a really tight deadline and then you don't make it you're going to be racing the yeah clock. yeah yeah and you don't want to make mistakes out. then you know exactly yeah so give yourself plenty of time so you've got a dually on the back right yeah yeah dually what what made you decide to do that well you know um it had a, a higher gbwr when i bought it i weighed it totally empty ten thousand ten thousand pounds okay after i did the whole build i got all my stuff in it all my tools and everything 15,000. Oh, wow. So I put okay. two and a half tons of stuff in this van, you know? Um, and so I'm glad that I got the dually. That gives me a little bit of extra wiggle room. And it's it's split as to whether or not it's better in uh, in the snow or in mud or stuff like that. But it's done really well for me so far. I've, I've driven it in Colorado in the snow, up and down the mountains, no problem. So this was, uh, what was this? This was a, this a FedEx, FedEx van. van. Yep. Okay. Yep. Did you get it at auction or how did you? Uh, no, I found it um, at a dealership. You know, they had a few uh, commercial type vans. It's not too old. You know, this is a 99. It's got a 5.9 Cummins in it. Okay. Um, you get a little more space. You know, it's wider. Yeah. Um, taller. And uh, and it's more symmetrical. I mean, it's, you know, it's boxy inside. Right, so. which was easier for the framing and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, how much solar you got on top? Uh, 400 watts. Okay. Yeah, 400 watts of solar. Do you ever want more? Are you? Well, yeah, I'll yeah. be upgrading it. Yeah, I'm doing a refit this winter. Okay. And uh, at least doubling that, maybe, um, maybe even more. Cool. We'll see how much we can fit on the top. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Use the real estate. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. What's the most boondockish place you've been? Oh, probably uh, um, Utah. You okay. know, Utah. There's a lot of great places oh, out there. A lot of good land. Um, there's really a lot of good camping right outside the national parks there, like right outside of Arches. Mm -hmm. You can find uh, uh, BLM land and free camping all over the place. So yeah, this cool. is a neat little Thanks, neat ride, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it smells you. nice. I, I think that uh, the wood burning stove be, thing is here, super nice. Take a look at this, maybe. 
Oh. A friend of mine gave me this cedar here. Yeah, maybe. No, that's not it. It's that's something it. else. It's something else. <laughs> maybe it's a. It might be I'm the cedar. Yeah, it. this is well. This yeah. is tongue and groove here. This is cedar, so that could be it. Maybe it's just my smell. <laughs> yeah, huh? maybe you just smell good. You <laughs> smell like a rustic forest. <laughs> All right, guys, take it easy. Ciao, bye bye.